you had to have a security detail on you when you were on campus, but that you had to be essentially <laughs> dropped off like kitty drop at campus because <laughs> they wouldn't let you park on campus because they couldn't guarantee the security of your car. How long did this have to go on? Well, this lasted from my entire second semester as, as student body president. I had to constantly look over my shoulder and worry that one of these students who said, and there were students that put this in the official Belmont College Democrat group text that if they saw me on campus, they would attack me. And, it, you know, they wanted to beat me up. They wanted to punch me. They wanted to punish me for being proud uh, to be an American. But in the end, that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part was not students saying, we're going to attack you. It wasn't having security with me whenever I was on campus. It was on the day of the presidential debate, the final presidential debate, where President Trump debated Joe Biden at Belmont University. Uh, I found out from a friend of mine who is a Democrat. He was very nice. He was on my cabinet in student government. He sent me a screenshot. And in it, it was of the Belmont College Democrats. And they were speaking poorly of me. And this one female student who apparently knew me, I did not know her, she told everyone, all 100, 200 Democrats in this group text, that she had been putting, quote, gross stuff in my drinks whenever I would go to her fast food establishment in the morning. You know, being from Tennessee, I love my sweet tea, and I need that every morning. And so she admitted to putting gross stuff in it. And that still wasn't the worst part. You know, fortunately, I, I went to the doctor. I was not ill. Uh, I called the police and unable, and they were unable, unfortunately, to investigate because I was healthy and because the Nashville Police so, Department is so understaffed. I just want to pause. Um, gross stuff can be a euphemism. You may or may not know what it was, but doesn't that essentially amount to food poisoning? Like, yes. we used to have food it, it, tasters for things like this so that the gross stuff would kill the food taster before it got to the person it was intended for, right? That's an assault. Yes. It is. It, it is. And so we called Nashville police and they said, well, you're fine. You're healthy. We don't have the manpower to do it. And my friend who sent this to me, he, he texted her back and said, I can't believe you think this is acceptable. This is terrible. And she said, oh, don't worry. It's not like I've been putting rat poison or anything like that in it. And just the thought of someone making a joke about that, you know, is, is unbelievable. But the worst part about this entire experience was we turned this female student into Belmont University. We gave the screenshots with her name and her picture. Her confession. Yes, we, we gave it to the school. And a few months later, the school didn't punish her and they rewarded her by accepting her into Belmont Law School. You know, that's just the wow. thing. This whole situation should have been something that the school used as a teachable moment for students about tolerance, freedom of speech, respect for different views. And instead, it sounds like they enabled bad actors to continue behaving badly, which is just it's horrible. And it's not what any educational institution, particularly a Christian institution, uh, should be engaged in. And the very idea that you were called a racist for supporting our country. I mean, what are they going to? What were their thoughts on black Americans who have fought and died for the very country they're saying is so racist? I mean, clearly these people saw something. We black Americans saw something and see something in this country that they're missing, which is we believe it's worth dying for, at least those of us who have gone out and served in our in our military. So it just it just boggles the mind. But we'd love to talk to you guys about the book. Uh, Kelly Kelly had a question about the book, and we're looking forward to chatting about that one. Yeah, so Gloria, what was your inspiration in writing this book about CV's experience, the family's experience at Belmont? Well, there were many things that compelled me to write the book. First off, I don't think that any student should be threatened on any college campus. I don't care if they're right, left, Republican, Democrat. Our children should be safe on every campus, be it grade school, high school, college. Where you live, we live in America. We should have some safety measures in place at schools. So my book is an educational tool for parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, to see what actually does go on at universities. 
This isn't something that only happened to my son. I realize that there are many children this happens to, and there are many books out there, there are many people who talk about it. The thing that I did that is different from the other books, as Stevie mentioned, yes, Tennessee is a one-party consent state. I have every recording. I was with mm. him for that call. Imagine sitting across from your son and not hearing all this and not being able to do anything or say anything. I am that parent who was there. And so I have firsthand knowledge of exactly how it feels. And I don't know that other parents do. I also try to include, I have included in this book, every screenshot, every text, every email. It even goes to the administration level. I mean, even the president of the school sending an email to Stevie that was just incorrect and improper and making a joke out of the change.org petition that Stevie was named in. I mean, he thought it was funny, but everything is included in the book. I mean, as we'd like to say, we call it like a picture book because it does have documentation of absolutely everything that occurred throughout this entire time. Even, we even have a picture of when Stevie graduated. So everything is mm -hmm. in there, absolutely every detail. And the evidence is there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I know that the school has been reached out to by quite a few people who have interviewed us, but they've not come back with anything. They can't. Stevie followed the handbook. He provided administrators with absolutely every single detail. They have nothing that they can come back with. They have every copy. But he has the copies of the emails when he sent them over. So I think clearly, that that's, yeah, I think that's helpful. I would like our producer to put the picture of the book online, Outcast, How the Radical Left Tried to Destroy a Young Conservative, so our audience knows what it looks like when they're looking for it online. I think what you're describing, the reason why this matters, not because you're handing it out to a lawyer who's going to build a case against Belmont, but because... Um, other families out there or people who are going through it themselves, you might be wondering, hey, what's really going on here? And you kind of, you get in your own head game thinking you might be the problem and, and it's you and you might just need to like sit down or lay down and just take it. And actually what you did, Gloria, is you you provided the expose. You brought into light what's been going on in darkness to show actually there's this whole collusion thing that goes on behind scenes in an effort to cancel those whose views are different and force them into compliance and to conformity and to compel their speech to align with what the extreme radical left wants you to say. And this is what it looks like. And so then people know this book essentially gives them a roadmap on how to stand. And that's what I think is so unique about this book. You wouldn't expect it to happen at a Christian university. You wouldn't expect it to happen when you got elected with nearly 100% of the vote. The, um, that's the thing is it happens at unexpected times, but that's when you need, this is the roadmap. This is how you get this evidence. And something else that you and I talked about for those who um, are thinking, hey, maybe do I need this roadmap? Um, Stevie had kind of already mentioned it. It all culminates in the debate, which we watched on TV. But Stevie was there on campus when things kind of reach a fever pitch with the Trump-Biden debate, right? And kind of give us a teaser. I don't want you to tell us what happens in the book, but it, this all laid out in the book. Um, everybody is all upset about how racist and horrible Stevie is and this drink poisoning. And then your book will tell us, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it will. The school was, was, was absolutely terrible. Uh, they went back on their promises, uh, and they made getting to the debate very difficult, but fortunately, and uh, we made it there. So I was very, very privileged to have been there and have seen President Trump do a great job uh, in making his case. Uh, but it, it is all in the book, uh, email by email. Yeah, so that that's going to be a fascinating read, the, um, the apex moment of this presidential debate. Um, and, then, and then after that, the book will detail out how we get to graduation and all of that. Um, and I just can't even imagine how harrowing this whole experience was. Stevie, how did that, how did school wrap up for you? What was the experience like? Were you like relieved and put that behind me? Or did it feel like victory? I summited that. Well, I remember being very nervous to go to graduation. You know, COVID was still going on a little past the two weeks they told us. And of course, Belmont University was limiting how many people could be in attendance. So I got to bring my parents and my brother and his wife, now wife. Uh, and so we're all masked, we're all socially distanced, and they sit all the students who are in the same majors together. 
well, I'm sitting by all these political science students who I know cannot stand me, and I can I can see them staring at me. You know, everyone's wearing a mask, but it's a small school. They know who you are. And I remember sitting there, and for weeks, my parents said, what do you want to do? Do you want to go? Do you not want to go? Uh, are you going to get booed? Do you think people will clap? We had no idea. And so I remember sitting there, surrounded by these people who said if they were going to see me, they were going to attack me. And of course, mm -hmm. they didn't because they're keyboard warriors. And that's just about it. But I remember they get to the last names of G and they're going, you know, down the list and they're almost to me. And of course I take off my mask. I stand up when they announce my name and I, I give a big thumbs up and a wave to the university president. And I was happy to, to be done with the school. You know, I really thought that I was going to be booed. Uh, I had told my parents to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the craziest thing happened. People were applauding and that wow. just goes to show that regardless of, all the pressure and all the heat on social media, there are still many people who think like us and stand up for our values and beliefs. And so that was one of the most reassuring moments of this entire ordeal was expecting to get booed and people were there clapping and they were proud of me and I'm very grateful and, and thankful that they were there to, to show me that, you know, remind me that I did make all the right decisions that I yeah. felt that our was doing. It was one of the, the, the most surreal moments of my life.